The England football team has a Qatar problem. They go to the World Cup in Qatar, having achieved what The Guardian called today a state of perfect mediocrity. As a Scotsman, I've got to say, too bad, so sad, never mind. But Labour has a much bigger Qatar problem because it is from Qatar that the television network Al Jazeera is currently broadcasting the Labour files, which threatens to hold the Labour Party below the waterline, revealing, as it does, a state of rancid corruption in Labour ranks so foul that no one in their right mind would be prepared to vote for them. As one former activist says in the Labour Files Al Jazeera Investigations documentary, if this is what Labour is like in opposition, what would they be like if they controlled MI5, Special Branch, the state apparatus and all the levers of imperial power? Would they be the same? Would they be as bad or would they be even worse? The documentary lays bare a state of lying, of surveillance, of conspiracy most foul to destroy their own party's chances of defeating Boris Johnson in the last general election because they would rather have Boris Johnson and the Conservatives in power than the former Labour leader now kicked out of the Labour Party Mr. Jeremy Corbyn. And why? Or at least what was the mechanism, the weapon that they chose to use? It was the weaponization of an entirely fake scam that Labour and Corbyn were anti-Semitic. And the crime that Corbyn and many of his fellows had long committed was to stand up for the rights of the Palestinian people and oppose the crimes of the apartheid state in Israel. And many of them, in fact a large number of them, were Jewish Corbyn supporters who were drummed out, expelled. One member of the ruling National Executive Committee was suspended from the Labour Party this very week, having only just been elected against all odds as a member of the party's ruling body. The witch hunt of Jeremy Corbyn. The conspiracy against Jeremy Corbyn is, of course, of much wider and greater interest than the Labour Party. I care nothing for the Labour Party. And, frankly, now, although formerly close over decades, not very much for Jeremy Corbyn. But I do care about justice. I do care about the truth, whoever it's for, whoever it's against. And as I said repeatedly, on television, on public platforms, Corbyn was innocent of the central charge that was being made against him. And worse than that, those who were making the charge knew that he was innocent of that charge. The mass media in Britain, some of whom, one or two of whom, Michael Crick, crying into his cappuccino this very week that maybe he'd been too harsh on Corbyn and his friends, the mass media knew exactly what they were doing. The Labour bureaucracy, central to the conspiracy, knew exactly what they were doing. And the deep state, which may, according to the grey zone, have been behind the whole thing. Fat Mikey Pompeo, you remember him off The Sopranos? No, sorry, the former head of the CIA, former Secretary of State under Donald Trump, he made it very clear in recorded comments that Jeremy Corbyn would not be permitted to be the Prime Minister of Britain. I care about democracy. I care that Britain gets the government that it chooses. And I don't take kindly to conspirators, either from abroad, whether it's America or Israel, or the enemy within who are determined to destroy the possibility of the British people to have a government that was better than Boris Johnson's and better than Liz Truss's. This documentary, if there's any justice, will see a flood of members leave the Labour Party. And I hope so. It's time to get off the merry-go-round. 
If Jeremy Corbyn, with a membership of 600,000 people and with a majority for his leadership of well over 60% against all comers, if he cannot change the Labour Party, nobody can. The Parliamentary Labour Party, seeded as it is, with stooges and even agents of imperial power, will simply not allow it. If Corbyn had got 2,280 votes more than he did get in 2017, he would have been Prime Minister, but his members of Parliament would have let down his tyres as he set off to cycle to Buckingham Palace to kiss hands with the late Queen. And if necessary, they wouldn't have stopped at that. So this Al Jazeera investigation is a must-watch for every single viewer of the mother of all talk shows. Not because I love Corbyn, I don't. Not because I love Labour, I despise them. But because if you love the idea of truth and justice, then you must watch this program and you must leave the Labour Party if, my God, you're still in it. Now, as I speak, the people of Italy have been going to the polls for the first time in 10 years to directly pick their prime minister. But nobody should imagine they're going to be allowed a free choice in that matter because Ursula von der Leyen from the European Union Commission in Brussels was very clear this week. She told them, and I'm not paraphrasing, this is exactly what she told them in public, into a microphone, in front of cameras, if the voting goes the wrong way, we have levers. We have tools, she said. Tools that we've already used in Hungary and in Poland, which was a very brazen admission that they are openly intervening in the internal domestic politics of two important members of the European Union, and they're going to interfere in the domestic politics of an even more important member of the European Union, which was founded, of course, upon the Treaty of Rome. And Italy is a member of the so-called G7. Don't ask me why, but they are a member of the G7, and they've got an unelected bureaucrat openly threatening them that if the people vote the wrong way today in Italy, that tools will be used to punish them for that. If that doesn't make the great people of Italy flock to the ballot box and reject comprehensively the stooges, the so-called social democrats of various stripes, reject wholeheartedly the very idea of this European Union diktat, then the Italians are a lesser people than I have always believed they are. The people of Togliati, the people of Gramsci, reject these princes and princesses of the European Union Empire. Stand up for your republic. Reject globalism, which seeks to tell you who you can have in your own country, what you must do in your own country, what tax, what fiscal policy, what economic policy, and above all, what foreign policy you are permitted to have. I bring up the latter because you'll have noticed the distinct lack of enthusiasm in the likely ruling coalition later this evening for the sanctions regime, which has caused such disaster, not to Russia, but to the European Union itself. In fact, Berlusconi, the former Prime Minister, who will be a minister in the new government in just a few hours' time, he actually supported this very weekend uh, the Russian special military operation in Ukraine. He made it clear that Russia was forced into this action in defense of its people under the self-defense charter of the United Nations, one that's been used by other people before. Now, 
Of course, things are heating up on the Ukraine-Russia front. The proximate reason is the referenda over the last day or two that are taking place in the Donbass, where the people are being polled in a referendum on whether or not they wish to join Russia. I am absolutely certain that after the last eight years of discrimination and bombardment of the mass murder of 14,000 of them by the coup regime in Kiev, that those people will vote in overwhelming numbers to join Russia. This will be important not just for geography masters. It will make Ukraine a much smaller country. It will allow France to become the third biggest country in Europe, whereas Ukraine will become the fourth. Ukraine will shrink and it will become ever more dependent on you, on your taxes, on your military. It will be an anvil that you will carry on your back for the rest of time, in addition to all the other anvils that you are carrying. But the referendum means something else. It means that Ukrainian NATO attacks on the people of the Donbass will henceforth become an attack on Russian citizens. They will be defended not as at present, overwhelmingly by a people's militia, brave, absolutely filled with the elan of defending their land and their people, but less militarily accomplished than the Russian official armed forces, who will now move in very much larger numbers. Russia has about 140,000 soldiers in eastern Ukraine now. Soon they will have more than 400,000, approaching half a million, because they will be defending not these self-styled people's republics, but defending their own sovereign territory and their own citizens. And they have called up 1%. If you're reading the Western press, you'll be surprised by that number. They're calling up 1% of their military reserve. They're not calling up John Doe or Ivan Bloggs in the street. They're calling up people who are already military reservists. You didn't know that either, did you? They don't have to train them for six months because they are already trained as military reservists. So 1% of their military reserve is being called up. And many of those will go and defend the new parts of Russia that are likely to emerge over the next couple of days. Now, the United States says that it simply will not recognize these referendums. To do so, said Washington, would be an affront to the sovereignty of Ukraine. Can you hear them laughing in Belgrade? Can you hear them laughing in Serbia, where NATO literally sliced off part of their country and called it something else, Kosovo, and recognized it as a separate independent state and put it in the European football championships, punished them by forcing them to participate in the Eurovision Song Contest. People appoint ambassadors to a fake entity carved by NATO without even a referendum and without ever having been a part of Albania. Kosovo was created by NATO the same NATO that says the people of Crimea or the people of the Donbass have no right at all to exercise their inalienable rights of self-determination and to leave the territory of the coup regime in Kiev. It's enough to make a horse laugh. But here's the rub, Washington. Nobody gives a toss about your recognition. Nobody gives a toss about you. You are welcome to sink further and further into the morass of your own making. But the Europeans are being sacrificed 
for Washington's determination to make war by all means short of military, direct military confrontation with the Russian Federation. And I want to single out in the one or so minutes I have left for this monologue, the people of Germany. Your country is being systematically destroyed by Joe Biden and his government in Washington. They are destroying your economy and with that destruction will come social upheaval and conflict between regions, between peoples, and will be feasted on by the forces of extremism that exist in your country. I don't have to give you a history lesson of what can happen in a Weimar-style collapse where people can't stay warm, where people can't go to work, where people can't earn money, where inflation is unleashed and becoming uncontrollable. I don't have to spell out for you what can be the consequences of that. Of course, all over the European Union, the economic situation is becoming catastrophic. But Germany is the big enchilada. It's the big bratwurst. It's the big sausage. And it is being crushed underfoot by Joe Biden. Lastly, on Joe Biden. Some of you think I'm cruel. By highlighting continually the specter of the President of the United States who is issuing all these diktats to all these European satrapies, wandering the corridors of the White House in his soiled pajamas, unsure which door is the toilet and which door is the Oval Office. Some of you think I'm being cruel. But if you saw the latest video of Joe Biden at the United Nations, wandering the wrong way off the stage and all but plummeting off the platform into the crowd of waiting photographers and journalists, must know that this man is not fit to be sent out for a loaf. You would not expect him to come back with the bread or the change or come back at all. Joe Biden is the most powerful man on the earth. And look at him. Look at him in video after video after video. There he is, almost plummeting off the edge of the platform. Well, we are almost falling off the edge of the cliff to which he has pushed us. Prepare for a bumpy ride. Fasten your seatbelts. This is the mother of all talk shows.